Hi, my name is Andrew Pershing. I'm a scientist with the University of Maine and the Gulf of Maine Research Institute. And I'm going to tell you today why nothing really matters, at least to me. For the last few years, I've been working to build computer models of where right whales are likely to be in the Gulf of Maine. Uh, right whales are critically endangered. There are only about 400 of them left in, in the whole North Atlantic, and all of them come to the Gulf of Maine to feed during the spring, summer, and fall. Uh, right whales feed on small crustaceans called copepods. They're little shrimp about the size of a grain of rice, and they get pushed around by the currents uh, into, into these dense patches that the right whales feed on. And our hypothesis is that, or our best guess, is that right whales follow these patches of food. And so we predict that right whales will be in areas where there's lots of food and that they won't be in areas where there's little food. So in order for us to know whether our hypothesis or our best guess about what's causing right whales to move around the Gulf of Maine is correct, we need to get some evidence. And the evidence that we've used has come from aerial surveys. So these are people who go up in airplanes and fly transects. These are predefined routes across the Gulf of Maine. And as they're flying along, they're looking for the whales and they count where the whales are and note where their positions are. And we've used that data to show that our models do a pretty good job of predicting where whales are likely to be, but also to, to predict where whales are not likely to be, in that our model says whales shouldn't be here and the spotters don't see them. So one of the questions I often get is why we don't just go to where the whales are and use the data from, say, a, a whale watch excursion. Uh, the problem, at least for the point of view of our models, is that these whale watch boats only go where they, where they think they're going to find whales, because that's their job. Uh, you can get a lot of really valuable data from that sort of, uh, from that sort of survey. Information on, for example, whether uh, a particular whale had a calf that year, or whether whales tend to come back to the same area year after year. But in order to test our models, we need to have information from areas outside of the regular whale distributions, because those are really, really important areas. One of the big risks for right whales is being struck by, uh, struck by ships. So for example, we need to be able to, to know where whales are not likely to be for, so that we could, for example, put a shipping lane in there. But we also need to know when whales occur in those, uh, in those areas so that we could, uh, for example, warn the ships to slow down. One of the really challenging things about science or about the sort of surveys that the aerial survey crews have to do is to really have a lot of confidence that nothing is really nothing. Uh, the aerial survey crews follow a well-defined set of protocols. For example, somebody is always looking at the water and they make careful notes on the condition of the water uh, for things like waves and clouds that might make it difficult to find a whale. This allows us to be able to, to look at their data and say that, yep, that area, they really didn't see a whale there and really be able to use that information to test our models. So that's why nothing really matters to me.